sound The nations of the earth are coming back to Jesus Do you see the crowd? Men, women, children have come to worship Him Have you ever wondered what it is like to be involved in a, a prison where there is a revival taking place? Have you ever asked the question maybe, what really happens behind bars? What happens with these murderers and rapists and bank robbers? Well, just have a look at what's going to be taking place uh, as we enter into the personal lives of some of these men and really see what is taking place behind bars. I have a specific card when I come into the prison and then we have to sign in. If we bring any guests in, we have to make sure that uh, it goes through all the various channels. So this usually just takes a bit of time. Um, of course, Saturday things are a little bit slower. Uh, also, it's Christmas time, so what you find is they don't have many staff members here as what they would like. These guys, because of good behavior and so on, they, they allow to clean the floors. It gives them a bit of opportunity to get out of their cells and so on. So it's part and parcel of the dynamic here in the prison. The guys get certain opportunities to do things that gets them out of the cell which is great for them. What's taking place now is I'm just waiting. They are busy getting the guys from the various cells to come down and uh, the religious care worker he's gone up there to get the various people from different cells to come down. Um, generally there are certain guys that, that want to be there every Sunday uh, then they what they try and do is they they try and get some friends or some of the guys they're staying within the cells to, to come to the religious meetings. Some of us have had the privilege of visiting various revivals around the world. One of the things we find here is that there's a real passion for prayer. Prayer that is prayed from the heart. And not only prayer that is prayed from the heart, but really praise. Praise that is coming from the heart. Praise that, that touches you at the very core of your being. I'm 
aspects that's taking place in the prison but it's not only that there's the preaching of the Word of God there is the hunger for the Word of God Amen. when you say the name of Jesus the word Jesus the name Jesus is the way that the power of the Spirit comes into the world. Yeah. I will send the Spirit in my name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, when God created Adam and he was still nice and fresh, he was fresh from the hands of God. He molded him out of the ground and he breathed into him the breath of lives. And he called him man. <laughs> so God is raising men. He's raising men that have been in prison. There are strong men here today. There are holy men here today. And we are prophesying about men. We also have a woman. It's wonderful to have a woman here today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I'm going to share a, a simple but a deep word. 
The Bible is like the ocean. The ocean is wonderful if you're in a boat and you go on top of the sea. And for some people, Jesus, they just know Jesus uh, as it were, just on the surface. But if you jump over the boat, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. It is like the ocean, it's like the Bible. <laughs> you can be a young child and you can read the Bible. And the Holy Spirit will help you understand. Yes. And you can go a bit deeper and the Holy Spirit will help you understand. Amen. The word of the Lord goes on forever. It's very, very deep. So today what we're going to do we're going to go from being on the surface to some depth. And then when you have some depth, you want to come up with some fresh air, we'll come to the surface again. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says that you've got three eyes. You've got two eyes that you look with, but you also have the eye of the heart. Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. So before we hear the word of God, we're going to pray with one another. That the eyes of our hearts will be enlightened. Amen. Amen. Are the men going to pray? Are the men going to pray? Yes, they're going to pray. So you get with somebody, you pray that God will open the eyes of their heart. Can they do that? Get with somebody. Introduce yourself if you don't know one another, then we're going to pray. The first day I went to the service, I was hiding my Bible, not sure whether, because media at that time was very violent, and uh, people who go to church were, I mean, were looked as, as if they were cowards. Mm. Uh, but when, 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 I, when I got into in, in the service, I realized that there were many brothers in, inside the church. I couldn't believe myself. Couldn't believe what I was seeing, seeing them. Because there were brothers worshiping, praising the Lord there. That's when I took out my Bible and <laughs> got confidence. Because of me coming to church, my mother's safe now and my sister's safe also. It's just now my father and I am busy working on him to be saved. Okay, amen. Okay. If you are here this morning, you want Jesus to come into your life. I want you to raise your hand. Thank you. Many hands going up. Now, if you have your hand up, please come quickly to the front. Come quickly now. Hallelujah. There is a miracle taking place right now. Something is moving in the hearts of these men. There's a power, there's a power that is drawing them. Now we are going to pray with these men. 
I want to encourage you men that are believers that when these men have made a commitment to Jesus when Jesus has come into their hearts I want you to come alongside and encourage them Amen, Amen. Are you gentlemen that are listening here I will pray in English and we will pray in Zulu. You pray from your heart. And a miracle is going to take place today. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Today, I turn away from my old life. And today I come to you. Come inside my life, Lord Jesus. I welcome you inside. Today you are my savior. Today you are my savior. Today you are my Lord. Today you are my Lord. Today you are my healer. Today you are my healer. Today you are my deliverer. Today you are my deliverer. Today I am set free. Today I am set free. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, hey, this way, the power of the Holy Ghost. So, everything So, So, everything about the corner, I saw, and I'm very sure today, very excited to go the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to just tell the people out there there's only one hope is in Christ Jesus. Even on speak to the gangsters, I'm coming from a gangster background, even with drug dealers and things like that. Only one way out is Jesus Christ. Amen. In him there's life and without him there's no life. We want to just minister and share the word of God with the society. And must repent. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to tell tell the people on the outside, give them the message that if we have never come into prison, we could have been dead outside. But we thank God that he allowed us to come into prison, that way he could mold us and shape us and lead us into the right path. Open our eyes and make us see that how we was deep into sin out there. And today the many brothers here can testify that they were, there, they were still outside, they could be dead. But we thank God that he brought us, that allowed us to come here, that we could be saved today. And, amen. And many of our brothers today, they, they really, really appreciate being in prison. Prison has taught them so much of things that they can go outside and they can still walk with Jesus. Even though people on the outside can see us different because they call us outcasts, they call us all kind of words, but we want them to know that in prison, Jesus is operating and he's moving and he's saving people in prison. As much as God is operating outside, he's operating in the prison as well. So let them, let them not look with the different eyes. Jesus is the only way. 
Amen. Jesus saved us, can save them as well. Amen. Ageko munyungulungulu munyungulungulu wetu yena o inkosum sindis part 20 pilo zetu. Sinya mbonga yena osayo o part 20 zoyamu nge mbonga kakulu. Sanga tinko sijari nga loku impegi. Amen. So we're serving very big sentences here in the space but we believe that Jesus is alive and is the only way and with him we are set free and the Bible says if one, if he sets people free, is they are free indeed. Praise the Lord. Swenzi ne gongo gu bigo tungulu kulu gu uti uti aga pegi mufale tu pega umu super mwa ke nupendo gu gu tando mbonga tungulu kulu nangi pilo nangi pilo ya mzimi na ukobolo am inzela nchini nga mwa nami inzela nebe ngambak zona sante nga yega ngabuele nkosi nga wong. Si amba ucheso nkosi na umsi ndis. Mwa nagle zinzu gu na sisi kadi nesi jenga nesi si amba nga yena ukche ngo gu fagua kesi pamba nwen wasindikin kulule. Mwa ukubu chesa gaya kesi pamba nwen au feli zono sisi. Gawe na maje sayi kebe nge kosa gele na ibu lalao Nezi za kongu ngola wa sezo eni Kota nge nga kache yoso kochi ngifrige lela Eti zo eni o mtu Akukuli simo so mtu Abe lyo kuku aeta lele kona Kwa espe si higo veke kono kulu kula esta lele kona Kote si higo maje Ido kulu kulu aevele Kwe hike mwola kenge ipilose eni Kwa kongu mtu wenga pande Naka pangati kwa lenda omichi Akeko omu yu mtu Onga sizo mtu Na pande ka krestu e nkosi No msindis amen Man, I give glory to God. Jesus is a King of Kings and a Lord of Lords. Amen. I want to say everybody who's out there that uh, if you have faith and believe in God, God can do the impossible. Yes. As I've showed you my ticket, I got a double life sentence. But when I came here to prison, God has set me free. Even though I'm in prison, I'm free. But I believe that there's people outside. Your guys who are outside, y'all are in prison if you don't receive Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the, li Amen. And the life. And freedom is only found in Christ in no other place. So I give glory to God. I give Him uh, praise in my life. And I want to encourage y'all that without Christ, you won't go anywhere. You won't receive nothing. You won't receive eternal life. And you won't know what it is to be free in Christ. I just give God all praise, glory, and honor. Truth lang, the job and I can to a life sentence, come met a man that no twenty-five years for a rope party, for fifteen years for rope party, and ten years for attempted murder. Go to and do like chess, no man to uncle and cool. It is Linko see Umbuso Uncle Uncle Aose by careful observation. No Maga Kumun Toyo Tina Umbuso Uncle Uncle Uzo, but the kingdom of heaven is within you. So at the time the church was giving me life sentence, he was giving me the intellect life in Jesus Christ. Since I came to jail, I met Jesus, and I thank the Lord that he saved my life. Everybody can forsake us and leave us, but the Lord will never forsake Amen. us and leave us. He is a Jehovah Jireh, he's a provider for us. I just tell your brothers out there, Jesus, if you take Jesus, he will provide for you everything. You can have all the money in the world, but you'll have no peace without Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, okay, my name is Gift. I just received the sad news that said in my heart that one of my one of my cousins stays in C4. I heard by Ricky that he died too. He died yesterday, late yesterday. But today, I thank God as as referred to the book of First Thessalonians chapter five verse eighteen. It said you must give thanks. You must give thanks to God in all circumstances. So I give thanks to God, even though my heart is sad. So I give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells me in Job thirty three that it is the spirit of God that made man and that the breath of the Almighty gives us life today, my brothers. Today, eternal life is living inside of us, my brothers, that we have seen the light of Christ today, my brothers. Amen, amen. Today, we walk by the Spirit, my brothers, and we live by the Spirit today, my brothers. So today, my brothers, Christ Jesus has come into the world as a Savior to save us, to save our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, that He died for our sins, my brothers. So today, my brothers, we must also lay down our life for Jesus Christ because the Father sent the only Son into the world that whoever believes in Him shall not die but have eternal life. A um, new concept or new program that they're wanting to implement uh, called restorative justice whereby they, <clears throat> some of the people that have been victims of the crime and the perpetrator who has brought the crime upon themselves, what they're endeavoring to do is to get those people together so that the person who's been the victim of the crime uh, and the, the, the person who's brought the crime towards them, that they would actually meet together and uh, they, could, they could actually get to know one another. What are your thoughts? Do you think that that is a good idea? I think it's a very good idea. Because uh, 
most of the time we, we don't have a chance to, to show our remorse. You see, and uh, when we come in here, especially when we come, a lot of guys, yeah, they still, they don't care about what they did. But when you find the Lord, the Lord actually softens your heart. He makes your heart soft. And then you realize that what you did was wrong. And uh, it would be nice for us if we could sit in front of them and tell them, know what we feel and how sorry we are for what we what we actually did and uh, and they and another thing it can be a testimony even to their lives that there is a God who is real and God who changes lives that is a very good idea because there's many many guys here that have been saved now and they want to get the victims and they want to uh, uh, like apologize to them ask them for forgiveness you know often when you go to court you, you, it's it's very impersonal where now you are able to meet the person what are your thoughts on that? I think, uh, Pastor, it's a good idea because, uh, more especially for, for us, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to ask for forgiveness. Uh, actually, there are some of us that still believe that they are innocent, but I, I, don't, I don't think it's a time now for us to justify whatever, but it is for us to mean to rebuild our relationship with, with the people outside and the people that, that were harmed. Uh, but whatever happened, I think it's, an, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for us that will help us greatly. Because sometimes you go outside there and people haven't forg forgiven you, and you still have a problem. I think it will help us. We need to deal with forgiveness. It's a very important part of our Christian war. We need to uh, get the victims' uh, forgiveness in what we've done. Because when we, when we get saved, we get placed upon our hearts to ask for forgiveness for, for what we've done. So I think it's a very good idea myself. One of the positive aspects of the correctional services is giving the prisoners the ability to, to express some of the things that is taking place within their own hearts uh, through various creative dimensions. One of them is art. It's good to see you again, and uh, um, I believe that you're an artist and so on. Um, just, uh, just a matter of interest, how long have you actually been in prison? I've been sentenced approximately a year now. I would think it's four years incarcerated that's in prison. You are able to do some art and, and so on. Now, why do you get, is that special privileges, or is it because of good behavior, or how is it that you're able to do painting? In prison, uh, if, you, if, if you conduct yourself according to the told the regulations and if you behave well they give you privileges on, on a six monthly or an annual basis and one of my privileges was to bas basically have, have a hobby and I chose to start painting. Well I said I only started painting in prison um, I found a great inspiration in it I found a great relaxation in it but I also found a way to express from within myself what was, what was within me um, my my, my ability to express my affection to my wife and my children, but most importantly to express my relationship with God as well. Um, in, in, in observing little things, the creation, I mean, the, trying, to, trying to grasp what he's all about, you know, and bring it forth in paint and in brush, so, yes. There's a wonderful story of the evangelist Philip having a a revival and the Holy Spirit telling him to join an African man on his chariot having come from uh, the Queen of Candace he is busy reading the scriptures and Philip joins with him and he says do you understand he said well how can I understand unless somebody tells me Philip the evangelist joins him in the chariot and after having shared with him some thoughts he says well there is some water what hinders me from being baptized. He was baptized immediately and he went on his way rejoicing. And that pattern is still being perpetuated today in the lives of the prisoners. And they went on their way rejoicing. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our one and only Pastor Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank God that He's given me this opportunity today to come in front of you all and testify what the Lord has done in my life. I was once lost but now I'm found. I thank the Lord that He has taken all my sins away and has given me a new life, He has transformed me. I thank God that even as I'm here in prison, I found salvation. I thank God, I thank
thank God even for the sin is what I'm doing. But I believe that God has His plans, His purpose in my life. I want to give all, the, I want to give God all the glory and the honor for setting me free. Okay, yeah. Nithya, you've heard what I said. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Did you receive Him into your life? Yes. And have you repented of your old past life? Yes. Right. Upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit into the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I thank God today for this day because this is a very important day for us to be baptized in the name of Jesus. It shows that God is working in the prisons and we also thank our pastors for today for doing everything in our lives and we thank them that God's blessings must multiply in their lives and that God must bless us abundantly. On the confession of your faith, I now baptize you into the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit into the Lord Jesus Christ. I never get baptized today, but I got baptized in 97. And what I'm trying to say is that I got baptized in 97, but today, up to today, I'm still saving the Lord. Because what the Lord has done in prison, the Lord is not only moving out there, but moving in prison as well. As you can see, the, how many guys got baptized today? Because why? The Lord loves the prisoners. And the Bible says that when he was in prison, you didn't come visit him. But we want to tell, tell the people out there that Jesus Christ is real in prison here, has real out there. So don't despise the prisoners because the prisoners are chosen people and prisoners are God's creation. So respect them as well and, and also forgive them for what wrong they've done. As you can see, the testimonies, the testimonies are real. Uh, the guys that are here, and of course they have to maintain their testimony because they're going to go back into the cells. If there's no reality in what they're saying, well, of course, it will soon be exposed. So there's a, there's a real reality about the guys. And as you can see, there, there's a real church here. And uh, amongst the guys, there's a recognition of one another. Uh, as you saw when the guys were getting baptized, there's great excitement. Uh, each of the guys is standing for one another. And uh, often I find that even in the churches outside of prison, that the exuberance and the passion and the love that the guys have for God is not the same in the churches outside. And uh, in some strange way, the Lord uses this opportunity. Uh, Jesus himself said, you, know, you visited me in prison. Um, and he was talking about the end time judgment. And he was really saying that in many senses that the prisoners have some aspect of his life that are here in the prison that is going to be triggering eschatological judgment eventually that's going to come on the world. So we just want to say thank you to the prisoners here today. Uh, for the guys that are working in the prison, we want to say thank you to the musicians. The musicians, they, they do the, the best that they possibly can. They always try and uh, help the guys in their praise and worship. So we hope that you've enjoyed your time together with us today. As you can see, this is a wonderful expression, a wonderful expression of the body of Christ and of the love of God. We encourage you to pray for Westville uh, Prison. Uh, we're wanting a real move of God to take place. Already things have begun to happen, as you see. But we want God to touch uh, right from the top, right down to the bottom, that the glory of God will cover the whole prison from the top to the bottom as the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. This is the journey that God has given me to travel. And it has to be traveled. I realize that I had to do it. It's either now or never.